Hello, and thank you for checking out the channel once again, or Facebook, wherever you might be watching. Helps me out if you hit the like and subscribe button. It's the way the algorithm works. I wanted to give you an update on my firewood situation. Not so good. Um, it's February 22nd, and this is the day of the massive cell phone outage. It doesn't really affect me too much because I have satellite internet and I, I use Wi-Fi calling. Not that I need to call anybody, um, but a little unnerving. You know, all these uh, major cell phone carriers are down all at once. Uh, kind of ominous hearing the fighter jets practicing above. I hope it's nothing more than just practicing. But here off the grid, kind of self-sufficient and uh, hope everything works out okay and we restore the communication. Uh, firewood, yeah, um, getting low. Here it is toward the end of February. I've got another probably three weeks to go of staying here, and then I'm going to be out. I'm starting with the <clears throat> low-hanging fruit first. This uh, hemlock tree came down a couple of years ago. It's been sitting here. It was dead. It's been drying. And I say low-hanging fruit because it's uh, right here on my property. There's a house. And in case you're wondering what this uh, contraption is, this is my... Uh, it's about a four, four or five feet deep hole covered with insulation. Now, up until this year, I had this roof down on the ground. My goal was to get the roof put on so it's easier to access uh, the area. But uh, I, I ran out of time. Uh, I ran out of decent weather and also ran out of uh, materials. So it's covered. Uh, it doesn't really need to be closed in, but it will be. I'm going to put a floor in there, a little trap door. What's good, if I need to keep things from freezing, like paint or uh, beer, uh, whatever, I put it down in that hole and uh, it stays about 50 degrees year round. And that's where my the pressure tank is, comes up from the lake. I've got a deep well pump there. Uh, several years ago, about seven or eight years ago, I dug a three foot deep, deep trench under the ground here. So I have a buried water line. So that's why I'm able to have running water uh, even in the middle of winter. And the, the line was already buried from here up to the house uh, when I bought the place. They had a um, point, which they aren't very good. It got filled with sand. It was really uh, of, of little value. So I got rid of that, but used that spot to uh, dig a deeper hole and uh, have the running water. So another day of uh, just firewood procurement. This one is going to need to be split, but I had the splitter. So and get on it. Well, as luck would have it, I hit something with a chainsaw, either some dirt, a rock, or maybe a piece of metal or a nail in the tree, it dulled it immediately. Um, so I need to stop and uh, sharpen it. And I've had this uh, little sharpener for a while. It actually works pretty well. It's just for sharpening chains and chainsaws. You do the angle here, you set the angle, and you put it in the guide, and uh, there's a stop here. And um, this comes down and you 
does a correct angle. Um, you can change the angle if you're going to be doing any ripping. You want this angle almost straight across on the chain. Ripping meaning going uh, with the grain on on a log, which I've done. I made these uh, these uh, vertical posts. You can see the side there. I cut those, milled all those with the chainsaw. So they're posts. They look like trees. Well, they were trees. And I've got uh, two or five, five of them. Uh, so I did that all with the chainsaw. And again, that's with a ripping chain. So I'll get to work here and uh, sharpen up a couple of chains. Uh, blades, I've got a uh, 16 inch and uh, do this 20 inch over there. So I've got two different chainsaws. That should be good. Yep. Alrighty. We'll make a little adjustment there. It's taking off too much of the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> 